In this video, we're going to be talking about the graphic scale, also known as the bar scale. You can call it either one. And this may be the kind of scale that you most thought about when I originally started talking about uh, scale. Well, here is a graphic scale. It's just drawn out. It's a visual, it's a graphical representation of uh, the distance and what it represents in the real world. So if you have a scale drawn out like this, then it's very easy to take a ruler, as I have illustrated here, and be able to see exactly what kind of uh, distance represents a certain distance on the physical planet. This is actually the kind of scale expression that I'm going to be talking about least. You know, these are very easy to construct once you have a verbal scale or from a representative fraction. And even though this may have been the kind of scale that you thought about first when you think about map scales, uh, as we've seen, the use of representative fractions is actually the most common way to express scale and the kind of way that people want scale to be expressed if they are cartographers or GIS uh, specialists. So as you can see, you can actually convert uh, from expressing scale in one way to another way. If this were your graphic scale right here, and it were true that you've got the zero to one inch, and you've got exactly one inch there, uh, then you can create a verbal scale out of this. One inch represents one mile. So here's the verbal scale representation, and there's the graphic scale representation. And I hope that you would also see then that the representative fraction of this particular graphic scale would be one to six three three six zero because there are 63360 inches in a mile. So we could create a representative fraction from this graphic scale, also a uh, verbal scale, and we can always transfer back and forth between all of them. So the graphic scale, the major advantages are that they are simple and visual, and it can be easy to use if it is well made and you know how to use it. It is also ideal for when the cartographer does not know the final size of the map. Obviously, maps are always made to a specific size and a specific scale, and if you change the size of the map, then you're changing up uh, the scale of the map as well. So there may be certain situations where the cartographer does not know the final size of the map, and in that situation, if he or she uses a graphic or bar scale, then the graphic or bar scale will change proportionally with the rest of the map and continue to provide an accurate scale. Representative fractions and uh, verbal scales will not do that. That's very important. One situation where cartographers may not know the final size of the map is if the map is going to be projected onto a screen, such as in a PowerPoint presentation. There's no telling how large or small the map is going to be uh, based on the particular projector set up in any particular room. And so if a map that is being displayed on a projector has a representative fraction of uh, whatever it is displayed on that, that will be inaccurate once the map is projected up on the screen. So it's very important in those situations to use a graphic scale because the graphic scale will enlarge at the exact same proportion as the map and continue to be accurate. The disadvantages include basically the same kinds of disadvantages that the verbal scale has. First, it locks the user into one system of measurement and unit. At least one particular bar scale does. Sometimes you see that there are multiple different bar scales given for different units of measurement and different systems of measurement. And then, of course, it does require some degree of mathematical sophistication to convert from one system or one unit to another. If all you provide is a graphic scale uh, and that somebody wants to measure in a different system or a different unit, they're going to have to do all the conversions themselves. So in certain situations, though, it is common to see scale expressed more than one way on a particular map. Sometimes maps have all three. Sometimes the maps will display the representative fraction, give you a verbal scale for that, and give you one or sometimes more graphic scales uh, for the simple and visual depiction of the scale. So that's completely possible, too. Your job as a GIS analyst is to understand all of the major advantages and disadvantages of all of these different ways to convey scale and also how they work so that any time you find yourself in any particular circumstance, you're able to choose the method of communicating the scale that is most appropriate in any particular circumstance uh, and for the particular audience to which you are speaking.